let's take a look at another investment example. Again, please pause the video and read the problem. Now in this problem, instead of maximizing the return, we want to minimize the risk. We are given that there is $200,000 to invest and there are four stocks to invest in and for each stock we are given the annual rate of return and the risk measure per dollar invested. As you know, the risk indicates the relative uncertainty of the stock price. If the stock price fluctuates a lot, then you have a stock with higher risk and a stock with low price fluctuations has a lower risk and the stocks with a higher return tend to come with higher risk. Let's look here. Which stock has the highest rate of return? Right, it's A. Notice that A also has the highest risk measure, 0.1. Now what is the stock with the lowest rate of return? Well, it is C with 0.06 and its risk is the lowest out of all four stocks. So for C, the returns are not very exciting, but it is the safest stock out of the four. In this problem, we want to minimize the risk. The rate of return for the entire investment must be at least 9%, and no one stock can receive more than 50% of the total amount invested, which would be $200,000. As usual, first we define the decision variables. But the same variables should be the amounts invested in these four stocks and we'll just use the letters A, B, C, D for the names of the decision variables. So we let A be the amount of money invested in stock A and similar definitions for the others. B, C, D, and stock B, C, and D. Now the second step is to work out the objective function. Now we want to minimize the risk of the portfolio. A portfolio just means the total investment. And we could think of the risk as the amount of money that's at risk. Here the risk of the portfolio is the weighted sum of the risks of the assets, the assets that is the stocks. And that is, you know, weight of A times the risk of A plus weight of B times the risk of B. Uh, and so forth. To understand this, let's consider some simple hypothetical scenarios. Let's say you invest all the money in A, the riskiest stock, with a risk measure of 0.1 per dollar. So then uh, A will be, that is, amount of money invested in A will be total, that is 200,000, and the risk from this will be 0.1 times 200,000. So it would be 20000 for the portfolio. Now, at the other extreme, suppose you invest all the money in C. So that is, C is $200,000. Then the risk of this portfolio will be 0 0.05 times 200000 is 10000 and this will be the lowest risk possible for the portfolio because you're putting all the money into the lowest risk stock. And this is what you do if you just want to minimize the risk without regard to any constraint. Now getting a little more complicated. Uh, suppose you put half the money in A and half the money in C. Then what would be the risk of this portfolio? Well, half the money means A is 100,000 and C is 100,000. So the risk of this portfolio will be 0.1 times 100,000 
plus 0 0.05 times this 100,000, or that's 10,000 plus 5,000 will be 15,000. Here we can see that for each stock, we multiplied the risk by the amount invested. Now A here and C here. So the general expression for the risk of the portfolio is 0.1 times A plus 0.07 times B plus 0.05 times C plus 0.08 times D. So this would be the objective function we want to minimize. Now let's talk about the constraints. So we could see that here's a constraint, at least 9%, and uh, here more. Also remember, now, it, now here it says the annual rate of return must be at least 9%. This means the rate of return from the portfolio must be at least 0.09. Now what is the rate of return from the portfolio? It's dollar return divided by the total amount invested. Well the total amount invested will be oh, $200,000 and at least is greater than equal to then 0.09 and we could now multiply both sides by the denominator 200,000 to make it look simpler. So we could rewrite this as dollar return grid equal to 0 0.09 times 200,000 which is $18,000. Now what is the amount of return? Well it must be the sum of the returns from the four stocks. So let's look at the rates of return for these stocks. So the return for the portfolio should be 0.12 times A plus 0.08 times B plus 0.06 times C plus 0.01 times D. So, so this expression should be the amount of return from the portfolio. So I'm just going to copy this down over here. So here's our constraint. So what's next? It says here no one stock can account for more than 50% of the total dollar investment. No one stock can get more than 50% of the total. Well, what is the 50% of the total? The well, total is 200,000, so half of that is 100,000 meaning the $100,000 is a limit on how much you could invest in each stock. So we need a constraint for each stock. We need to say something like this, that A, amount that goes into A is less than or equal to 100000 B, less than or equal to 100000 C, and D. So here are the four constraints. Now lastly, we will need the non-negativity constraint as usual. Now collecting these highlighted objective and the constraints uh, together in one place, here is the entire linear programming model. Got your objective here, minimizing the risk. You got the total amount invested, 200,000. You have the rate of return requirement and their limits on the individual stocks and non-negativity.